Can you imagine how spangly you're gonna feel when you win this base? Gav, if you, if you owned this base, what pants would you wear? <laughs> Is it working? Are you working? So I've got something really cool today because it's a confessional from me to you. The base geeks of the world out there are gonna be, you are gonna be ashamed with me today. And, and hopefully pleased as well at the same time. So it's gonna be very confusing. Ashamed and pleased because I'm gonna, I'm, I'm doing a confessional, a music man confessional. And also I'm going to be actually giving you the chance, the opportunity to win the brand new music man stingray as well that is in that case. Ah! After and roll. Let me just grab the bass so I can, wait there. In this case is a music man. And, but first of all, my music man, my music man Stingray confession is that have, I've been playing bass for 18, I've been playing bass for 22 years, 23 years. Bearing in mind that the music man Stingray is like one of the three most iconic basses or one of them in history, right? There's probably like the jazz bass, there's the P bass. There's the Stingray, the Rickenbacker, I've probably forgotten one, but it's, it's right there, isn't it, among those, those classic basses. And my confession is that I've never played, well, I've actually played, I've played one Stingray on a gig once, a jam session. Other than that, I've never played a Stingray. I think I might have played Friends once, but that's it. Like, how did I get 22? years down the line and never play one of the most iconic basses of all time. So between me and you, this confessional, shh, don't tell anybody else, right? Here's the new, the new sting, right? It's very cool. It's very sparkly. Oh, 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 I'm gonna fall. Oh. <laughs> so this is the brand new sting, right? I've got no idea what the EQ or anything, any of the EQ does. I thought it'd be cool to get somebody or a couple of people that they <laughs> survived okay base it's totally fine so i'm going to call somebody super special on skype and um, ask them all about this base the music man and you know all the secret settings and then i'm going to tell you exactly how you can you know grab the chance of winning this super special piece of tasty base it's delicious base thing Hey guys, lovely to meet you. First of all, huge honour, do you know what I mean? Like, the guys behind Ernie Ball. How cool is this? <laughs> Obviously, it'd be great if you spoke about how this bass came to be and why you wanted to look at um, bringing this new version out. But also, if you guys could let me know, what do these controls do? I don't even know. I've been like kind of fiddling with them and, I'm, and, I, and I've been holding off. I wanted to go and search on the internet. I thought I could look on Google, but it'd be very cool if I just asked you guys to tell me what they do. Obviously, we've, right. got, we've got a volume knob. Volume. What about these guys here? The one down from the volume. First one down, that's treble. Yeah, so that's treble. Let me just check this out. And it's like center notched, right? As a center the time. Yeah. Got you, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a true cut and boost. Yeah, have the, um, have these controls stayed the same? On, on this this new bass versus the old one, yeah? The original Stingray was a two band, so it was only bass and treble. And then probably like early 90s, late 80s, something like that, it mm -hmm. turned into, we offered the three band and the two band. Yeah. And then basically the, the most popular by far, 95% of them, 98% of them that were ordered were three band. So that's why we kept the three band on this one. Wicked, wicked. And what are the, what are the other two controls okay. down here? Mid and then bass. So treble, that's mid. Treble, mid, and bass. Bass is closest to the bridge. Wicked. And does that, is it, is it all on all of the time, this humbucker? Yeah, it's just the, on that single humbucker, it's just full humbucker the whole time. It's full humbuck, humbucker all the time. Wicked, yeah. Because it sounds beautiful. If you, that, if you turn that bass up, you can crank that bass up and roll off some of the other stuff. You can kind of get more of a... Uh, I don't want to say vintage sound, but a definitely more mellow sound than a traditional Stingray. Yeah, like it sounds really big, like the bass control as well is huge. Yeah, yeah, it's really wicked. Were the originals passive? No. No, they were always active, yeah, right from yeah. the get-go. Active, yeah. Were you sort of like the first guy with like, 
when did the first active bases come out? Were you guys the first guys to kind of get into the active base game or, or one of the first guys? We were one of the first uh, in the 70s. In those days, a lot of guys were experimenting with, you know, active electronics. And I think Alembic and Music Man were, were some of the first production companies to come out with a bass. I'm not sure who was first, but we came out in 1976 with the very first Stingray. Holy crap. That's before I was born. <laughs> back in 76, were you guys huge still back then? Or was it a smaller company? Well, it was a company Leo Fender started, obviously. Yeah. Um, my dad was a beta tester for him, too, growing yeah. up. So he did that with the Stingray. Um, that, they were really successful with the amps and the basses, really. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a brand new company that Leo had to wait uh, 10 years after his clause with Fender was up. So he sold in 65, had to wait 10 years before he could compete with, with Fender. Yeah. Uh, 1976, uh, he formed uh, Music Man with some former Fender partners. And, you know, since the clause was up, that's when they decided to, uh, you know, offer a, a brand new bass. In this case, it's, it's the active Stingray. And then, the, of course, the Music Man amps came out at the same time, oh, yeah. which uh, featured the hybrid um, solid state and tube technology at the time. But uh, the Stingray was pretty much immediately popular with uh, guys like Lewis Johnson, Bernard Edwards, um, John Deacon from Queen yeah. was one of the first to, to play at a Hyde Park with a big concert there. Um, uh, Rod Stewart's bass player, Phil Chin, uh, one of the first guys in the 70s to adopt it. And then from there, it's just a laundry list of, of players that grabbed the Stingray. Yeah. Why do you think it's been so like, so successful? I think it was, a, at the time it came out, it was a very unique sounding bass. It kind of cut through the mix uh, in the recording studio. You could show up and... Producers, engineers had a very easy time recording this bass. I mean, it was active. It was there was more output. Yeah, getting it on two inch tape back in the day, you know, was was a, a big deal. It cut through any type of musical environment that was going on at the time. Disco was big. Uh, the bass yeah. cut through with the with the EQ control. Uh, you can virtually do anything you want, and and it made recording the bass very easy. It, it took less time to record. You know, Fender bass is great, but to get cop the right sound because it's passive, you know, took extra time and energy. This bass, even today, recording engineers talk about how easy it is to lay down tracks with the Stingray. Yeah, they know exactly what to do with it, right? It's like the three of the most iconic basses ever made, right? Jazz bass, P bass, Stingray. That's the, like the three, isn't it? What was the idea about like revamping the Stingray? What was, where was the idea born from and what have you done to it? Well, I think it was just time, to be honest. Um, I mean, it had been a long time since it had been touched. Now, we thought we wanted to pick up our bass sales, too, because now Music Man is probably 70% guitars, where before, you know, five, six years ago, it was 70% basses. Really? But well. our, guitar sales, our, our guitar sales have been so good. And it's not necessarily that the bass sales went down. We just wanted to do something and have something fresh, to be honest. Yeah. Um, the, we learned a lot of things making our modern classic guitars and some of our other artist, artist models, you know, different features that we wanted to implement on the Stingray um, in the electronics package too, like with the bongo because they're neodymium pickups on that bass. So there are a lot of things we learned by, by on the different models that we wanted to incorporate and you know, we wanted to make the Stingray a lighter bass because inherently it's going to be heavier than other models that are alder and that have way less hardware. Yeah. So the first step was, you know, we got to reduce the hardware weight because we want it to be an ash instrument. So we went to aluminum parts. So a lot of those parts are aluminum, especially the new tuning keys. There are designed, you know, just with the tuning keys themselves, it'll save uh, 0.7 pounds wow. compared to the old uh, compared to the old keys we did. So we also used like the smaller bridge bridge on that compared to the Stingray. Yeah, I've seen the like, smaller bridge, yeah. Besides uh, weight on the bridge, something we had learned when we did our Caprice and Cutlass bases, which are the passive ones, and we also used the hollow saddles. We thought it, we knew it would help mellow the sound out a little bit and take some of the, the treble and the zing off the Stingray. Yeah. And that was something we wanted to do. Um, some we, you know, feed general feedback. And we kind of wanted to modernize the sound a little bit. Um, so that that's kind of one of the things we did with the bridge. Um, the electronics, um, the pickup, it, the pickups are neodymium pickups, but they're wrapped to Stingray specs. So it's basically like a Stingray pickup, but it has like bongo magnets in it that we'd use oh, on our bongo yeah, yeah. base. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the, uh, the EQ is basically, we, we uh, tweaked it. So it didn't have as much range as the bongo, so you couldn't like dime it and have it sound 
completely uncontrolled, like where no one would use it. Like <laughs> someone walked into a store, someone said to yourself, you're like, what do these do? If you turned everything up, it's not like ear shattering. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or if you turned it all the way down, it's not, you know, completely awful, but it still would give you a, a wide range of uh, things to play with. But what else do, what have, I, what have I not asked you that I should have asked you? Because there's probably something. Is there anything popping that you want to mention that I haven't? Well, uh, you know, just, just some similarities and then maybe some dissimilarities. Um, we're still using um, ash for, for the body wood, yeah. which over the years, you know, we've made a lot of different versions over the years for particular artists. You know, we've used alder. I think we even tried mahogany. But I think... Uh, now that we've had all these years to to really sit back and think, what is the best tone wood for the stingray? It's definitely ash. Yeah. So we took ash, and then we uh, implemented the new DM, DO, neodymium pickups, which are smaller magnets but much more powerful. We read uh, address the preamp to work with the new D neodymium pickup, so you have a lot more uh, output. But when you have a hotter uh, preamp and pickup, you know you definitely need more headroom. So we designed an 18 volt preamp, which on the back you can see there's a slot for two batteries. Two yeah, yeah, batteries. I got right there. Yeah, yeah. And that's another new feature that uh, is not on the older bases. More headroom means less distortion. That means you can, you know, not work your amp as hard. Kind of have always have a, a really clean, undistorted signal. Um, Scotty covered the, uh, the the bridge design we got from the Modern Classic, and uh, stainless frets now. Yeah, the, the the fretboard has stainless frets, so longer fret life yeah. and i think um, just watching you hold the base uh, a big a big deal for comfort is the uh, forearm contour that goes from your shoulder area all the way down to the strap button that's a new forearm contour that we got from the modern classic series so the idea there is wherever your forearm is you're going to have comfort um yeah like even if you're like a slap guy down here doing the whole it's still right. going to be it's still rounded there right Rounded, yeah, uh, much larger than the original base. So uh, that was the idea is to provide more comfort wherever your forearm was, whatever type of play are, whatever technique you have, you've got uh, perfect comfort in, the, in that area. Well, guys, I'm going to send all my guys over to you so they can check out this base. It is like really, really killing. Like, again, the second time I've played a Music Man Stingray, and uh, I think I might have to get myself one. Yeah. But I just wanted to say huge thank you for hanging out with me today and give, you know showing us all Thanks. the stuff and yeah just a massive basey high five. So first up, guys, just want to say a massive thanks to Scott Ball and Derek over at uh, Music Man for you know giving us this base to give to you guys. Everybody giving them a big pow in the comments. How awesome is that? And then secondly, I want to tell you how to win this beast as well. Can you imagine how spangly you're going to feel when you win this base? Gav, if you, if you owned this base, what pants would you wear? I would wear matching pants. Do you want to know what I, or did you just want an opportunity to tell me what you'd wear? <laughs> I think I just wanted to tell you what I wanted I to wear. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go with the same. <laughs> so, to win this base, it's, it's super easy, right? All I want you to do in the comments, I want you to put hashtag, what do we say, Gav? Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag. I'm 40, I can't do that. So put hashtag Music Man Stingray, and then I want to know your top three Music Man Stingray players and why. Tell me about their albums and stuff like that. Tell me in the comments, I'm going to pick somebody randomly, and I'm going to be sending you this super tasty music, music man. I think I've had too much coffee this morning. In the comments, let me know. Remember, hashtag Music Man Stingray, and then let me know your favourite three Music Man Stingray players and why in the comments. Tell me about their albums and all that kind of, all those shenanigans, and I'll get this beast in the post to you. Take it easy, and as always, I'll see you in the shed.